Hi there, Rajesh here. So today we are going to discuss this question called uh, sum of all sub matrices. So given a 2D matrix A of dimensions n cross n, so we need to return all sum of uh, sum of all possible sub matrices. Okay, so we can see the constraints here. So the length of the array could vary from range uh, 1 to 30, and the elements could range from 0 to 30. So sorry, 0 to 10, and uh, the output that they are expecting here so we need to sum all the sub matrices all the elements in the sub matrices and we need to return that okay so let's jump into an example okay to make it uh, understand better so let's take this 2 by 2 matrix which contains all the elements as one okay so here all the elements are ones so the question says we need to sum of we need to sum up all the elements in the possible sub matrices that we can generate from this so what all are the possible sub matrices that we can generate um, from this matrix is so this all the one cross every one element can form one cross one sub matrix right this is a one sub matrix and this elements form and the sub matrix called this like this and this element form this sub matrix see every individual element can contribute to a sub matrix because um, this is a one by one sub matrix right so this is still valid so every one single element can contribute to a sub matrix now now that we are done with the, all the individual elements then we have to consider the rest of the elements okay rest of the sub matrices using those elements so these two elements can form a sub matrix saying that yes okay this this is a sub matrix and these two elements can form another sub matrix in this way and once we're done with this and these two elements can form a, a horizontal kind of sub matrix that is this kind of one cross two and these two elements can contribute to a sub matrix count so this is another sub matrix okay so this whole matrix itself is a sub matrix okay now that we are done with uh, all the formation of all sub matrices now we have to sum up all the elements in the obtained sub matrices like say here 1 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 16. So the answer in this case is 16. Okay. So now let's check another example. Let's say now we have now we take 1, 2, 3, 4 as a matrix. Now let's see what all of the sub matrices that we can generate using this matrix. Okay. So as I told you earlier, so every individual element can contribute to the count of sub matrices uh, what by, by this what i mean is every individual element can be a sub matrix okay so the one alone itself is a sub matrix two alone itself is a sub matrix three alone is a sub matrix and four alone is a sub matrix okay now that we are done with the unique i mean one, one cross one sub matrices now we'll go to the rest of the sub matrices so one two is a sub matrix and three four okay and we are done with 3 4 so 1 3 is another sub matrix and 2 4 is a, another sub matrix and the whole matrix can be considered as another sub matrix so we need to sum up all the elements that we obtain in the sub matrices and that let's say that is x so this x is the answer that's what they're asking that's what they're asking right so there is no big deal in this question okay so so let's uh, get into the various uh, so let's uh, you know go with the approaches that we have understanding the given question now let's get into the approach okay uh, okay so let's let me draw a body matrix so that i can explain you sorry i'm bad at drawing just ignore that part okay okay so let's say let's say let, let's consider this uh, element that we are having here okay let's consider this particular element okay this particular element will always include this particular element will always always include if we choose the top left of the sub matrix from this region and top and bottom right of the sub matrix from this region okay so again i'm repeating so this particular element which we are having right here will always include in that sub matrix that we are choosing okay if we choose the top left of the sub matrix from the in this region so in this region in the sense this particular region 
and bottom right of the sub matrix from in this region. Okay, let's say, let's say, if I ch this is a sub matrix. Okay, this is a sub matrix, and this is a top left, and this is a bottom right element, right? Hey, if the top left element is this, if the top left element is this, and bottom right element is this, this element is always included. Okay, if the top left element is this, and the bottom right element is this, this element is always included. Okay, if the top left element is this and the bottom right element is this, this element is always included. So see, if we are able to pick the element from this region, the top left element, the top left element from this region and bottom right element from this region, this particular element is always included in that region, in that sub matrix. Sorry. So, but what if I choose the element? Uh, so you can argue that uh, we can we can. We can apply the same thing like top left and bottom right. Instead of doing this, we can also do the uh, like uh, top right and bottom left as well. But but we are bottom left as well. But we are but we are going with top left and bottom right. But what if you choose the element from here, right from here? Okay, you are choosing the element right from here. That is top left and bottom right is somewhere here. So what if okay it is not possible to draw. So this one. So in this case, we are forming this matrix, right? We are forming this matrix. We are forming this matrix. In this matrix, if you could see carefully, this element, this particular red element, is not included. Okay. Okay. That's why we are saying that. So we have uh, selected some two regions, saying top left and bottom right. If at all we choose the elements, top left element from the this particular region, bottom right element from this particular region, this element is always included. Okay. Once, if we get to know what are the total number of possible sub matrices that we can make, including this particular element. Again, I repeat. Once we get to know what are the total number of sub matrices that we can create, you keeping this element inside in that sub matrix, then we can easily get the contribution. This element is, uh, you know, uh, contributing in all the sub matrices. Let's say, let's say this particular element. One, let's say this element is one. This particular element is, uh, this particular element pre is present in two sub arrays. Let's say there are two sub arrays, and this particular element is present in those two sub arrays. Okay, yes, two. There are two sub arrays, and this particular element is always there in these two sub arrays. Once we get to know that, hey, this particular element exists in two sub arrays, then we can simply do two, because there is a two sub arrays into the value of this element. What is the value of this element? This is two. So literally, what we are doing is we are just getting the contribution of this element in all the sub arrays. So the question here is how to get this count of sub arrays in which this particular element is included. Okay, this is the major uh, thing that we need to find. So how do we find the number of sub arrays in which this particular element is included? Okay. So for that, if we know, let's say, uh, let's consider this L, uh, this. Um, Coordinates as x comma y, where x is the number of rows and y is the number of columns. Okay, so in this case, so I as I told you, uh, we have to pick the top left from this region, this particular region, bottom right from this particular region. Okay, so how many, how many choices we have to choose the top left? If it is x, if it is y, we can make, we can make x plus one because uh, this is zero based index. Into y plus one. Okay, x plus one into y plus one are the number of ways we can choose this top left. Okay, this is the number of ways we can choose top left, and so we know we somehow get to know the top left thing from here. So, but how do we find the top bottom right? Okay, so we it was already mentioned the question. Saying that it is an uncrossed matrix, so we can simply subtract this. So let's say P is n minus x plus one. Okay, and and Q is n minus y plus one. So we are just subtracting the thing that we are that is obtained here. This x plus one, y plus one, we are just subtracting. So let's erase this and let's uh, get into a better example to make things clear. Okay, let's take a four by four matrix.
okay this is a 4 by 4 matrix okay let's pick this i'll pick this element okay i'm picking this particular element and for this element as i told you we have to choose the top left from like this and bottom right from this area okay what are the indices for this 0 1 2 3 0 1 2 3 okay i, I just mentioned the indices so here so in how many ways we can choose the top left from this region so how many ways we can choose from top left okay we can choose top left as i told you this if this is x and y so what is x comma y so x comma y is the the coordinates of this uh, red block okay because that we have to we are just finding the contribution of that particular element so here x is 1 and y is 2 okay in how many ways we can choose the top left the top left can be chosen in this way 1 plus 1 because we are adding 1 because because it's a zero based index okay this 2 this is 2 plus 1 okay 2 into 3 is 6 there are six ways in, wh in which we can choose this particular top left what are those i'll tell you this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 this is 5 this is 6 okay that can be obtained using the simple this is a simple math that we are doing okay now that we got the number of ways we can get this top left that is 6 now we have to get this bottom right which can be obtained as n where n is the size of the array it is mentioned that it is a square matrix because it is n plus n matrix so n minus okay x plus 1 ways comma n minus y plus 1 okay so this is a not comma this is some uh, multiply we have to multiply this we have to multiply this n minus x plus 1 okay into n minus y plus 1 if we do this you will be getting this rest of the bottom right thing okay so let's say let's say you have uh, three elements here you have four elements here okay so if you have three elements here and four elements here how many possible pairs you can make you can make three into four possible pairs like let's say uh, for example for example you have two elements here saying that a comma b okay you have two elements here m comma n so you have two elements here and you have two elements here how many possible pairs you can make you can make two into two possible pairs that is four so what are those those are a comma b sorry a comma m and a comma n and similarly b comma m comma b comma n okay so so in the previous uh, uh, sorry, sorry, just. in the previous diagram i have shown you that so if we know the number of ways we can pick the top left okay I told you how to generate the number of ways if you know the number of ways we can we can generate the top left and number of ways we can generate the bottom right then we just need to do what we need to do so we just need to do let's say this is m ways and this is an n ways so m into n this is the total number of sub matrices that we can make right let's say this is q so if we know the q then what we need to do we just need to multiply q into array element that's what we need to do so that's pretty much about this question so let's get into the code so this is the method prototype that was given to us and we need to code it the rest of the things okay so i'm initializing some variable with zero okay we'll be storing the answer in it and we'll be returning it okay and uh, we'll be storing since it is an n cross n matrix you can store you don't need uh, both rows and columns you can go with a single variable so I'm just storing an array of dot length. So now for i less than n i plus plus, which is just a, a simple matrix traversal, and j less than okay, sorry, it's n okay. Now j less than n j plus plus okay. So now for every element, you need to find the contribution of this particular element in all the possible sub matrices you can generate. So how you can generate? So first you need to choose, as I have been telling you, you have to choose the top left corner. You can choose an i plus 1 into j plus 1 ways where i and j is the current index of the element. Okay. Now you have to choose the bottom right which can be obtained as n minus i into n minus 
shape. In the video, I must have explained you in saying that it is n minus i plus 1 and minus j plus 1, but it's not. But it's just n minus i, n minus i. Keep these things in paper so you know you'll be getting things clear. Okay, now that you got top left and bottom right, so you need to find the total total sub matrices count equal to top left into bottom right. So these are the total number of sub matrices that you can generate keeping this element in those sub matrices. So what all sub matrices that can be generated using this TL into BR that can be obtained from here in all those elements this array of i comma j will be present. Okay. Now so now that you got the total number of sub matrices that, that can be generated in which this element is present. So you have to find the contribution and you need to sum up it uh, give it to the array so give it to the sum variable okay so you just need to append keep on appending to the, uh, this this uh, sum variable okay so now that can be printed as total sub matrices count into array of i j okay this is how you'll get and at last what you have to do is you just need to return the sum in which you have stored the total count so that's that's pretty much about this code guys it's pretty easy to understand so you know, it is difficult to understand the pictorial representation that I have showed you before that you can get things clear by this code. Thank you.